So a while back on my channel, I did a lot of work to this truck. I did uh, long tube headers. I did a 32 inch stall. Uh, full camp kit, you know, camp out springs, push rods. Uh, colder intake, I basically did all the bolts on the cam, all that. Anyways, it developed a tick. And you might be able to pick it up here. It's worse on the passenger side because the problem is actually on the other side of the truck. But if you hear it, it's like tsk, 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 tsk. But it's got a little rhythm to it. It's not consistent. Let's get to the passenger side. That sounds a lot like a valve train tick. It's got the same speed as a valve train tick because valve train ticks tend to be slower than like a bottom end knock. Um, but this is 100% my fault. I made the mistake of installing the header gaskets that came with the long tube headers and they're somewhat of a paper material. They're like a thick, almost like a cardboard. They're kind of cheesy. I should have never installed those. I should have went with factory GM exhaust manifold gaskets. That's the best thing you can do is just stick with the, you're better off reusing your exhaust manifold gaskets than using new shitty ones, if that makes any sense. So that's what I did. I went out and picked up some OEM uh, exhaust manifold gaskets, AC Delcos. Let's go ahead and, uh, what are you doing? <laughs> so here we are, OEM, GM, gaskets, part number 12617944. This is your best bet. They're a multi-layer steel design. So when you go to torque them down, they actually compress, and it's got like this little ring around the ports just to help seal it. And this is just the best thing you can use for exhaust manifolds or aftermarket headers, short, long tube, it doesn't matter. This is your best bet. Just just stick with OEM and you can't go wrong. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and pull off these uh, gaskets that I have installed here. And you can see just how crappy they are. And if you're not sure if you have a valve train tick or exhaust tick, this is 100% a header exhaust leak from one of the primaries. And when it's leaking out of one of the, one of the primaries, it, it has the speed of a valve train tick that I'll try to you know, describe. It's a slow tick, it has a rhythm, but one thing to tell the difference between an exhaust tick and a valve train tick is an exhaust tick will get louder under load. So if you go and put it in drive and put the motor in the load, it'll get louder. This is park. All right, here we are. I've got the header pulled away from the head. Uh, I had to remove the dipstick. It's just one 15 millimeter bolt. And uh, let's see, I put out the plug wires because some of the heat shields to go on the bottom of the plug wire gets, they can get in the way of the bolts. So I uh, got the wires out of the way. So the problem was this guy right here. The uh, bottom section of the, of the gasket here just completely blew out. That's where the exhaust leak was coming from. The front half here, this is me. I had to break it off and it just, it falls apart. So this, this happened on its own. This was for me taking it out, but look how flimsy and brittle this stuff is. It just, it falls apart. It crumbles like cardboard. And you can tell where it had been leaking. Because if you come down here and look at the port, you see the bottom of that exhaust port, it's black. Right in that area, like right between the, the bolt and the plug, you see like black soot. That's basically like carbon uh, from the exhaust leaking there for so long, it actually turns it black. So that's how you can tell that you've had an exhaust leak, like seal that black soot, and you come over here, there's no black soot. So yeah, it's been leaking out there for a while. Uh, 
but like I said, the GM steel multi-layer gaskets, they're going to hold up. They're not going to blow out like that. They're going to last basically forever. Uh, stay away from, from this type of gasket that I just showed you and just get the, stick with the OE. You can't go wrong with that stuff. All right, guys, it's all back together. About to go in for the first start. Hopefully, it runs nice and smooth. No weird, scary ticks. That's, uh... We're off to bed, it's a lot quieter, but I'm gonna go ahead and stick the camera under the truck like it did before and put it in drive and reverse and you know just get it in a load. I can already tell right away that it's it's fixed. It sounds so much better. Yeah, so if you're in doubt, if you have a lifter tick or any sort of other like valve train tick, uh, check your exhaust manifolds or your headers. You could possibly just have a blown out gasket, especially if you're using one of those cheap cardboard paper material gaskets. Those things are really cheesy. Um, yeah, check that first. Hope you liked this video if it was helpful. Anyways, hope you liked this video. If it was helpful and maybe you learned something, please like, subscribe. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching. All right, guys, so I recently picked up this little side job. Um, it's like a 2008 Silverado 5.3 misfire on a cylinder three. Uh, fuel, spark, everything's good. So what's the, th a lot of people forget about the third thing you need to diagnose for, uh, or to look for to find a misfire, and that's uh, compression. You need fuel, spark, compression. So if fuel and spark are good, that means you're not getting compression, and that could be from a different range of things, you know, you got rings, piston could be messed up, something with the valves, or in this case, the lifters. This Silverado has the common, all too common uh, DOD lifter collapse. And uh, I'm gonna show you what you can do to really pinpoint the cylinder. And uh, just to help diagnose, uh, it's, it's really easy. There's nothing to it. Let me show you what I did. So cylinder three is gonna be the second one back on the passenger side. So it's gonna be these pair of rockers right here. And to diagnose a collapsed lifter, all you have to do, it, it sounds and may seem a little sketchy, but just take off the coil pack and the valve cover and actually fire it up just running off of one bank. It will run on four cylinders. Fire it up and look at the rockers and see if any of them are not moving or not moving as much as the ones around them. And if you're quick, you won't even make a mess. Just go and fire it up. It's not going to hurt anything, I promise. And look at these two rockers right here. This one right here is not moving at all. No movement. That would be the intake lifter on cylinder three. It's dead. So that's the source of the misfire, and that's the collapse lifter. So when that happens, um, sometimes if you're lucky, the lifter could just collapse and the camshaft would be okay, the lobe on the cam. Maybe it, you, it went up and collapsed and kind of it's out of reach of the cam. But uh, there is a chance the lobe on the camshaft itself is actually fucked up. And what I'm going to do for this truck, just to kind of maybe save myself from work, save myself from doing too much work, is for sure 100% it needs a lifter. And so what, what you got to do is pull the head to get to the lifter. And uh, I'm going to pull the lifter out and look at the cam through the lifter bore to see if it needs a cam. Instead of just ripping out the cam, ripping off the heads, I'm going to start off from the top, take out the lifter. And from there, you can actually inspect the cam. You can get a good look at it. You might have to rotate the crank to get the cam lobe up top and get a good look at it. But um, if this guy doesn't need a camshaft, I'm not going to tell him to get a camshaft. Um, but 100%, that lifter is fucked. So that's what we know for sure. But uh, yeah, if you want to see a uh, DOD lifter replacement on a 2008 Chevy Silverado, uh, 
go ahead and subscribe. Don't forget to like, it helps, it comments. I'm so here's just a quick little update on where I'm at. I went ahead and pulled the head off. If you never pulled the head off, uh, the passenger side is by far the easiest. And luckily, the lifter that had collapsed was on the passenger side. There is a total of 15 bolts. There's two rows that go along like this. And these are all 15 millimeter bolts. There's, there's two rows of five. And then on the very top, under the intake manifold, there's five 10 millimeter bolts. And here's a little trick. You don't have to completely remove the intake manifold. You could just unbolt it and use something underneath to kind of space it up. And I used a can of brake clean. Um, and also, you don't have to pull the exhaust manifold. Uh, in this case, it was a stock manifold. Oh, and yeah, check that out. This got a little bit of my blood. It was uh, a little violent last night. But it's made in a way to where you can get to the to the bottom 15 millimeter head bolts through these little openings in the exhaust manifold. Maybe when I put it back together, I'll show you. So you do not have to completely remove the manifold. You can just kind of unbolt it and move it one way or another to get to the 15 millimeter head bolts. I went ahead and pulled the spark plugs because they will get hung up on the manifold. Um, so yeah, all I've been doing now is kind of prepping the block and prepping the head and cleaning it up as uh, best I can. Here are the two lifters that came out of cylinder four. Cylinder four is the second to the back. The one that was having the uh, the rock arm that wasn't moving. Passenger side is even. It's two, four, six, eight, four, second back. So they both look fine when you look at them side by side. But um, I forgot which one it was. Okay, this one's good. Here's the bad one. It just came apart in halves. It's not supposed to do that. Yeah, this one is nice and solid. Feels great. Roller looks good. Even on the one that failed, the roller looks good. And I did go ahead and inspect the camshaft, and the lobe on the camshaft is actually good. Let me see if I can capture that. So there's the lobe on the cam. I hope this can actually capture it decently, but it is. it looks fine. You can definitely, you see how there's a line? There's, there's two lines in the middle of the lobe. Those, that's where the roller contacts the lobe of the cam and that'll just be gone, completely gone and rounded off. And the lobe turns into just, it just goes around um, when the cam does fail. But when the cam does fail, it usually takes this roller on the lifter with it as well. And it looks fine, it looks totally fine. So this customer got really lucky the lifter just failed internally, and I'm, I'm not exactly sure how this lifter failed, okay, but what I do know is they're supposed to have, they're hydraulic lifters, so they're supposed to pump up with oil when the motor's running, and, you know, they put pressure on the rods and, you know, open the rockers, and this one, since it was busted, I don't think it was able to build oil pressure, and, uh, yeah, it just it wouldn't compress the rocker arm. So this is the new lifter. That I'm going to be installing. Actually, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is the new lifter because it's the, the cleanest one. And it's I just got it off of Amazon. It's a sealed power. This is a common brand, like at your you know AutoZones, O'Reilly's, and places like that. Part number is HT-2303. And I was kind of looking at the new and the old and trying to find what failed in the old lifter. And I did this quick little. This is what I found. On this, on the bad lifter, I can compress it. I can compress the spring and squish it and on this one and on this one I cannot do that let me try to show you what I'm talking about I'm going to try to capture this so this is the bad lifter look what I can do pretty easily without a lot of effort this is the one of the original lifters that was still good it stops and as well as the new lifter that's going in i cannot compress it it stops so again i'm not exactly sure what that even means but <laughs> the the bad lifter can compress so yeah that's all right i've got it nice and cleaned up i'm using a factory um ac doco head gasket and new head bolts i'm not going to show the boring stuff but i'll post the torque specs it's a little the torque torquing sequence is a little weird um, I'll post that in the description because that's the boring stuff. I'm just going to go ahead and slide the head back in here and start getting it back together. And um, can't wait to show you the startup video and hopefully the sucker's going to run good. 
So before I completely reassemble it, uh, let me show you this neat little trick just to kind of, uh, you know, verify that it is going to be fixed. That replacing just the lifter is going to fix the misfire and the collapse lifter issue and, you know, rule out the, the possibility of the cam being bad. So let's take a look here. This was the rocker arm that was not moving. And of course, it's like perfectly in the shade. This rocker arm right here. So what I'm going to do to make sure that this is actually fixed is... This is what I did. I popped off the cover of the starter relay. It's just a plastic cover here. You just pop off the cover of the starter relay. It's located right here. And whenever you depress this little solenoid here, it's gonna crank the engine. I'm not sure if that's called a solenoid. What's this called? It's like a little coil. I don't know, whenever you do this, it's gonna crank the engine without starting it up. So, let's come over here. I can. I can reach the starter relay and look over here at the same time and we're going to be looking at that rocker arm to see if it is compressing the valve like it should be. So as you can tell this rocker arm does have full movement. It is opening the valve all the way. Before I, I changed the lifter out it was not moving at all whatsoever. Zero movement. So. You know, this is a good indication that when I completely re reassemble it and fire it up, it should be fixed. So let's keep going. All right, so this is where we're at so far. I've got everything ready to go, ready to fire up. Um, it's it's a good idea to let your lifter soak in oil before you install them. If not, um, they will have a slight tick when they're dry. Um, you know, when they're a fresh lifter with nothing, with no oil inside of it, it'll, it'll tick for a second, and so it actually pumps up with oil. So. Even if you do soak them, sometimes they, they'll still tick. Don't get scared. Just let it run for a second. But um, let's go ahead and fire this truck up. Got my scanner hooked up to check for misfires. We had a cylinder on, on cylinder four. Sounds really good. One thing to look for is like high RPMs or surging that'll sh indicate like a vacuum leak or maybe an intake manifold gasket didn't sit right. Yeah, misfire definitely feels like it's gone. Let's go into my scanner. Um, just to kind of take a look. I, I wish I could have shown this before, but cylinder four was just misfiring like crazy. So yeah, from here, just make sure you don't have any air in the coolants, because even a little bit of air can uh, can make a truck overheat. Just let it run with the cap off, maybe squeeze some hoses, make sure the thermostat opens up, and uh, check for bubbles. If it's bubbling, that means the head gasket isn't seated right, or something isn't right. There should be zero bubbles. Um, yeah, I mean, that's basically it. So to kind of recap, some shortcuts you can do is you don't have to pull the intake manifold completely off. You know, you can just unbolt it and lift it up like I did. It's a little harder. It is easier just to get it out of the way, but it's less steps, I guess, to just leave it alone. Um, passenger side is the easier head, but if you do have to do the driver side, it's not super hard. You just have to take out the bolts going through the alternator bracket into the head. And there's also one bolt down here and once you take these, all these 50 millimeter bolt, bolts out, Jesus, I can't talk. When you take all the bolts out, you can actually slide this entire bracket just off to the side. You can leave the bottom bolt and like pivot it on the bottom bolt and just get out of the way. And then it's basically the same uh, process as the passenger side. It's, it's not that hard. Um, just, you know, the passenger side is a little bit easier compared to the driver's side. But, yep. Motor sounds really good. Not missing, no ticks, running smooth, guess that's going to be it for this video. If you like this video, please, as always, don't forget to like and subscribe, it really helps. Uh, comment below, dislike, hell, do, do whatever you want, it all helps, just do something. But I really hope you like this video, and I hope you learned something. See you in the next one, thanks for watching.